get like yeah. Hello everyone, Nelson Nader here, and today I have a redstone tutorial video for you guys. Um, this video will be part one in my new redstone 101 tutorial series. Um, in this episode, I will be showing you guys the extreme basics of redstone that someone who is completely new to it would want to know. So, um, before I get started, um, if you guys want to try out this map, um, it's a pretty cool map. I haven't made much modifications to it. There's also some cool floating stuff over there. The seed to this map is Herp Derp with a capital H and D. So, you can try that out. Um, all one word. So, also, I will be putting a download link to my current map, which will have all of my redstone things lined up for you guys. So if you guys want to try and experience the redstone firsthand, you can do so there by downloading it. So <laughs> let's get right into it. Um, this is redstone ore. Um, it's found obviously not on the beach naturally, but rather very, very low down. I'm not sure the actual numbers to be honest, but it drops about four to five redstone. You need an iron pickaxe or better. And yeah. So, just figured I'd show you guys that first. Um, here you can see, this is how you can craft a redstone torch. Just a stick underneath redstone, and that's kind of how you would do any to any sort of torch, like normal torch also. So, yeah. Um, redstone is pretty simple for a lot of the stuff. It's usually either, it's always either just on or off. Um, when it's off, it's having no effect to whatever it's hooked up to. When it's on, obviously it's supplying kind of like power almost. Very similar to electricity, I guess you could say. So when I hit the lever, it opens up whatever it's hooked up to. So I'll go more into what you can hook up redstone to in a minute. But for now, you can just see that. So um, let's look more into the lever. The lever is very simple thing. It's just, I believe it's smooth stone underneath a stick, if I remember right. Um, so you can craft it in your player inventory. Just, I guess I could do it here. Smooth stone, stick. No, nope, that's wrong. Whatever. You think you get the point? Maybe it's cobble. Who knows? Yeah, there it is. Cobble, stick, lever. Hooray or lever, as some of you guys might know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, you right click it and it turns toggles from on to off or I guess you could left click it but yeah um this is a button a button has to be mounted on the side of a wall it can't be on the floor or the ceiling um when you right click it it sends a pulse which lasts I don't know I guess you could say about two seconds or so yeah and just sends a pulse on and then a little bit later it turns off um, I mean, you'd like keep on right clicking it, try and keep it open, but obviously it's probably not a good idea. Um, you craft that with just stone on top of stone. I remember that one. So yeah, um, this are the two types of pressure plates. Um, stone and wood. Obviously, you would craft the stone one with smooth stone and the wood one with. Or is this cobblestone? I don't remember. Just you can look up in the wiki. Um, but anyway, the main difference is that really the only difference is that the wood one can be triggered by just throwing a block, and just having it rested on top of the wood one, whereas the stone one is not triggered by any sort of block on top of it. So um. Yeah, so basically you might have seen with the wood. So long as you stand on top of the plate, the redstone will be on, and it'll turn off shortly after you step off. Same with the wood. Um, so, yeah, that's the basic. Um, has to be on the floor. It can't be on the wall or on the ceiling. You can kind of think of this as a wall-mounted pressure plate. So um, let's go into torches. You know how we crafted them earlier. Um, a torch is always, if it's on, it's always spine power. If it's turned off, which we'll go into more into later on how to turn it off, 
it obviously will not be supplying power. So if you displace one, by default a torch is on. Um, and it'll just provide constant never ending power to your door or whatever you have hooked up to. Um, the way you can turn a torch off is by supplying indirect power to it. So when I hit this lever and turn that on, it'll turn the torch off. But when I stop supplying power, the torch is on and the door is opened. Um, this is commonly known as an inverter, which basically means if this is off, this is on, and if this is on, this is off. It's really simple as that. Um, you can see here that supplying direct power, as in directly trying to hit the torch with the power, does absolutely nothing. So you have to have it hit the wall or the block it is mounted on, whether that be the wall or the floor. So, um, yeah. Here you can see that redstone will travel 15 blocks before it just kind of stops. Um, as of patch 1.3, redstone gets darker the further away from its source before turning off completely. Um, I will be right back in about two seconds for you guys. I'm going to go make a daytime. Okay, and I'm back. <laughs> Um, so yeah, where were we? Basically, you can see, it'll go for 15 blocks before stopping. The way we can get around this is another block added in 1.3, which is the redstone repeater, which has a configurable delay, which we'll go more into later, and basically this just makes it so it can travel another 15 blocks. So you can place these every 15 blocks, or however often you want to place them. And it'll basically just renew the count. So this will go for another 15. After 15 more, I can place another, so on and so forth. Um, here you can see how it was less obvious over there, but when you match them all together, you can see how redstone, or how the repeaters, have a slight delay. Um, you can right-click it and configure the delay. You can go between 1, 2, three and four ticks for the delay. So the extreme being four, which is this. Um, most people are just gonna want no, or almost no delay whatsoever, like this. But um, some things like when people make those songs, um, delay is very helpful in making a whole automated system that way. So, oh yeah, almost forgot. One of these things, the diode repeater or whatever, is crafted by three stone, uh, a torch right here and here, and a redstone right in the middle. Um, I wouldn't recommend crafting this if it was like a real world, um, in like a world you actually gather the materials instead of just hacking them in, like I do, um, because the amount of blocks it takes to make one, while it does take up less room and less of a delay, it takes more blocks. So, unless for whatever reason you're worried about delay, I would just go with the old-fashioned way, which is... I'll show you it real fast, actually. This was back in my day. The only way you can make it keep on going before 1.3. Um, and here you can see how it does the same thing. It just renews the power. So I would recommend this if you're not worried about delay. Anyway, let's move on. Um, here I just have it set up, the different blocks that redstone can affect. Here you can see how it, it will shoot. Well, that was weird. It'll set off a dispenser every time you provide power to it. With a note block, pretty much the same deal. It plays a note each time you step on it. With the minecart tracks, you can use it to pick which way it's heading. That's pretty cool. Um, and then as you've seen earlier, you can affect doors in. 
I get a lot of questions with people asking, oh, well, especially with my double door tutorials. People say, oh, how come I can't? Or does this work with iron doors and wood doors also? Like, whatever. So, I don't know why, but people think that it wouldn't. Doors, as far as redstone con is concerned, wood doors and iron doors are exactly the same. There is no difference at all. Um, anything that works with one door will work with the other. The only real difference is that wood doors can be right-clicked to be opened. And um, iron doors cannot. Also, iron doors take longer to take down, and you can't do it with your bare fists. So, obviously, I think a lot of people have thought about this. This was my first attempt. <laughs> um, obviously, redstone does, in fact, affect TNT. So I placed one TNT up there. The reason why it made such a massive crater was because I do have a mod installed that makes the blast radius way bigger, so I wouldn't recommend this. Um, so this is my first attempt. Anyway, let's check it out. Let me pause this video real fast and back up my maps so that you guys can download it if you want. So one second. And just like that, I'm back. And we're ready for blast off. So yeah, this is the end of the video. Um, let me just get my important announcement out of the way. I don't remember if I said it at the beginning of the video that I had an announcement to make. Um, I have Tuesday is my birthday and got a lot of money, been saving money, bought myself, um, two things actually, bought myself an HD PVR. So I will be posting Call of Duty videos. Um, so I'll go more into that in a second. I also bought myself these really, really, really nice videos that I'm actually recording with right this second, which are Astro A40s, and they're unbelievably amazing. Would definitely recommend them. Um, but yeah, as far as the HD PVR, I'm recording Call of Duty videos now. I just want to let you guys know, I want to know what you think if I should post Call of Duty videos to this channel, Oblivion Modder 1579, or a second channel. Um, no matter what, I will continue making Minecraft videos, so don't worry about that. I'm just wondering if I should post them to the same channel. I will definitely be posting Call of Duty videos no matter what. I'm just trying to decide if I should keep the videos separate or keep them both on the same channel. So, yeah, without further ado. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good thing I backed this up. Thanks for watching. See you guys.